For the development of humankind, water is necessary. From the origin, people are living by the water, are transporting water and preserving water. One of the most ancient tunnels, the Eupolinos Aqueduct Tunnel in the Samos Island in Greece, is the typical example. Water has been used for centuries for milling and other uses. Waterways, rivers and canals have been used for centuries for the transport of goods and people. The world's oldest traffic tunnel still in use is located on the South Canal, Canal du Midi in France, Tunnel du Malpass. At the end of the 19th century, the principle of hydropower generation is developed. Hydropower currently produces 16.3% of the world's electricity and 90% of the current renewable power. It is a fully mature technology used in more than 159 countries. Underground structures are an important aspect of hydropower plants development as they are used for the purpose of water conveyance or for housing civil and electromechanical equipment in underground powerhouses. Being a renewable source of energy, hydropower can be considered as sustainable. A modern hydro turbine generator can convert over 90% of the energy of the available water into electricity. This is more efficient than any other form of generation. Besides, hydroelectricity does not use the water. All the water is returned back to its source of origin. It is a clean source of energy. Once in place, HPP do not create any waste byproducts. Building the optimal social, economical and environmental scheme is not an easy task. Some of the largest HPP schemes have been very controversial as they are often considered as creating negative environmental impacts such as upstream flooding, declining fish populations, decreased water quality, reduced quality of upstream and downstream environments. Are HPP really sustainable? How the use of underground space and tunnelling reinforce the sustainability of such projects. Underground structures can have an important role for hydropower plants, whether serving for the purpose of water conveyance or housing civil and electromechanical equipment in underground powerhouses.
construction of HPP in remote places, such as in Himalaya for instance, is a challenge. Technical difficulties can be encountered and in most cases are overcome. improvements can be made in building HPP. How a better use of the underground space will make HPP even more efficient and attractive. In most parts of the world, far less than 50% of capacity is installed. In the coming year, construction of new HPP will continue to develop. As for many infrastructures, where cost is high but lifetime very long, new financing needs to be used. Construction costs generally do not represent the majority of costs. Underground structures implies geotechnical risks and variability in terms of final construction price and time. This requires particular contractual, financing and insurance policies. Is the industry dealing with these conditions? How can financial models be used in the development of HPP? How is geotechnical risk handled with different financial models? <laughs> 